computer. Yes. Okay. So I'm recording this so that we can follow up and see what it looks like. Um, and I will also be live streaming to Facebook during the meeting and I will do at least one more live stream from this, not today, but um, another time. Okay. All right. Sorry, Victor, you can um, continue with your tips. <laughs> So basically, I would like to emphasize that on the, with the webinar, many things have to be set up not during the meeting, but before, before the meeting on the, the internet. So uh, I have access to, the, to that account, international account of uh, Family Federation for this uh, June 4th event. Okay. So if you are doing another event, you are probably using Caroline's account. So yep. You go on internet zoom.us you will access to that webinar okay but on caroline's account <clears throat> i only saw this webinar that i set up i didn't see any other webinars that's fine i thought this is not carol this is this is a different account then. this one is a different account but I, I thought you were preparing another event actually on uh, 17 or something no this is the one for the 17th that we're talking about that we're preparing for i see so it's a webinar, right? It's a webinar. So basically, you have the same option as a normal meetings. But if you go here, you have much more uh, settings available, especially you know the panelist invitation. When you want to invite a panelist, I mean a speaker or a staff that's required to be uh, among the panelists, it means like, for example, a translator or just even someone welcoming the, the speakers. Then you need to send a specific invitation through that uh, section here. So you see invite panelist. You go on edit and you write the name with the title. So for example, if it's a VIP, you should not forget the honorable something. And after the correct email, and then you just add them one by one like this. When you save, you, re you receive that, I mean, the, that VAP or that uh, staff or the, that speaker will receive an official invitation automatically made by Zoom with his personal link to connect to that webinar as a panelist. And only the, the one that access this website can do it. So usually it's the host. Okay, okay, yeah, so. It's a little bit new to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a little bit different from Zoom, but all the panelists, it means Caroline, yourself, Anthony, Renate, everybody will have, you will have to write the email one by one here. Okay. And they will receive it by, uh, by their own email automatically. So now in this meeting that we're having, this trial run, I could actually upgrade each of the attendees into panelists. Is that possible you in the actual that. webinar as well? You can do that, yeah. Okay. Okay, but this is the right way to for the procedure. Okay, good. Because Thank you. Also, I will stop my screen, but um, do you have a button at the top of your screen that says start the, the webinar? I clicked on start the webinar before we... Um, I mean, this this would not have this meeting would not have opened without start. I click start the webinar and this meeting opened. Okay, because there's something very important to understand also with um, the webinars is that before the webinar actually starts, you have a practice session. So the practice session opens when the host opened the, the webinar, mm -hmm. and all the panelists have the right to enter with their personal link. Okay. But during that time, the attendees cannot enter. They're just waiting outside. It is really practical because for the panelists, the staff, everybody, it's a crucial time to prepare, make sure everything is fine. So is that automatic or is that something in the settings that I have to check to make sure that I set it up properly? Uh, because this time I just clicked on start the practice session. And the attend I, I saw everybody as an attendee and I, I just upgraded because I had no panelists 
free invited. Yes, that's right. You will not have this problem if you would have invited us. Okay. Only with this. Uh, okay. But because it was not done before, that's why you had to start the webinar to see us as attendees, so you can make us. Panic. Okay. So next time I make a trial, yeah. I'll send already now, as soon as we know the panelists, we send the invitations with the link. Yes. And then I can send a notification to say we're having another trial next week. Yeah. And come in, and then the panelists will come in automatically, and anybody else will be in the waiting room. Absolutely. Good, good. Okay, so we'll prepare for that for next week. Uh, um, a question. So how long is the, is the practice session automatically, an automatic time, or do you finish the practice session and start the meeting? How does it work? When, you, when you're on the, let me share my screen again. Okay. If you are here, I mean, this is another Zoom account, but it works. If I go here and start the practice session, just like uh, Lily did, then you are only in the practice session. You can spend as much time as you want there. Mm -hmm. Only the host and the co-host at the top of your screen, you will normally see a, a blue button saying, click here to start the webinar. So this is a dangerous button because if the host or the co-host click on that button, it allows all the attendees to come in. Mm -hmm. And from that instant, they see what you're doing and what you're saying. So if you are, if you normally you make everything ready, you prepare a video, your video starts, then at the end, completely at the end, you click on that button. And when the attendees come, they see the video, countdown video, for example, it looks ready, it looks good. Okay. But it happens sometimes that one of the staff click on that button, for example, 10 minutes before the, the real time of the webinar. And then for 10 minutes, the attendees are just seeing us talking about technical yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It looks not so good, you know. It's like a, you open the curtain in a, <laughs> a theater. It's okay. the same. And it, the next question is, we see each other here. Uh, our camera's on and we see, see each other here. But once the webinar starts, we don't want to, do we just, if we, if we turn a camera off, will they just see the, the name or does the window completely disappear? So it's a little bit hard to, to imagine how it works. So I really, if you have another computer, another computer next to you, I really recommend you to make a test. With one computer, you are the panelist. And we have another computer, you have, you have okay. an attendee, and you will see what happens. But just to make short, the attendee will never see someone with the camera off. So they will not see your name, Anthony Cook, like this. And they won't see the window. Never. They, okay. will, That's the point. Yeah. they will just see, for example, me, Renate, and Lily talking. Okay. But when I'm the host but i'm not the mc i just turn my camera off and yeah. you won't even see caroline's profile yeah. either okay, okay. you know only see victor and renate okay at that, at that uh, stage yeah. okay good so i recommend you something that makes even safer is to spotlight people i know yeah. you, if you spotlight people you are sure that the attendees will see that person for example yeah. like this yeah Okay, I, I got it on my phone. You, you can, uh, I turn my camera on there. Uh, I can't, I mean, basically I've got my camera off and the window just doesn't appear on uh, for the participant. That was the point I wanted to understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. But I, another point to be very careful about also, I, as a host or co-host at the top right of your screen, you know, you have the view gallery view or speaker view. So the host has to be very careful about that gallery view because a little bit below, you can see also attendees view. And usually it's just like following the host view. Is that what you see, Lily? Yeah. So if you click yourself on gallery view, then 
the attendees will see all the, uh, the panelists with the camera on. Okay, so now for the recording, I wanted that. So, I've, I mean, I was on gallery view. So now I've just clicked on follow host view. So therefore the recording should have changed from speaker view to gallery view. Yes. Okay, good, good. All right, I've checked that on the recording. Good. So as a host, I never touched the attendees view. I just let, you know, the follow host view. And as a host, I always be very careful about what, what I see. Mm -hmm. what I show to the people. So on my desk, I always have at least two computers, one for me mm -hmm. and another one just as a, 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 a test. the attendee view to make sure I don't make an, a mistake because it's a little bit complicated to calculate all this in your head. But if you have a, a screen next to you, you see exactly what they see and you avoid and, uh, mistakes. Yeah. And only the host can control that, but no co-host can change anything there in those during Actually, the meeting. I don't see this attendees view. Okay, Tony, I'll make you host. Um Actually the co-host also has the the power to change that attendees view. Uh, no, no, I can't. I can't see it. All I see on the top right is speaker gallery. Mm -hmm. So then maybe it depends on of the setting of your Zoom account. Okay. okay, I'll make you host now, Tony, and yeah. see the difference. I'm, I'm, I'm host now. Okay, let me give you a second. I don't see this attendees view. When uh, you click on the view on the very top right, click on the view. Yeah, I just see speaker and gallery. Um, I mean, I've got some... speaker gallery and full screen. Okay, full screen. But I had the option before to also, as what um, Victor said about. Are you on the phone? Did you say? No, I'm on a Macintosh, so I don't know if it shows on. But I don't see it anyway. I don't need it as I'm, I'm as a co-host. I don't need it. Okay. Okay. So yeah. what was the other question I was going to ask? The copy um, on my, when I record onto my local PC, will I get the gallery view and the speaker view? Or what's the difference now in the webinar on recording uh, on the local PC? Will I get two video files or only one? Um, let me share my screen now. If you, if you are on internet here, you go to the settings. And after the recording session, you can choose all the different kind of files you want Zoom to create. Okay, that's in the cloud recording. But if I record, I thought there was a local, sorry, higher up was the local recording. Yeah. This is just to give permission for the participants to record. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but to, I, I almost never record locally. But to uh -huh. my experience, maybe you will have only one file. And on the yeah. cloud, you will have much more files, you know, depending. And maybe I ought to record it to the cloud then, because I saw Caroline's got a lot of video files on there that mm -hmm. as long as I've got the access, I can get it. The trouble was when we did it through Peter Staudinger, we waited, I had to wait a week before I got the files. So really? that was a bit, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you you can't get all those views on a local recording. Yeah, either. okay, then I'll record to the cloud. I have to change that setting then, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, change. before you actually send the, the panelist email, you can also uh, customize a little bit the branding. So for example, here, of course, you choose the English language. The second one is, uh, you know, when I receive an email, from whom will I receive the email? That name will appear first. And after this will be the email written automatically in the, in the Zoom email for the questions. If you have questions, please write to that email. And this is this one. This one will appear. So you, you can also change that. Uh huh. You see, for example, I use Jack Marion's account for UPF, but it will be very annoying if all the emails for all webinars comes to him. So I often change this one according to the purpose of the 
Let me know. So it's, no, so it defaults now to Caroline's email. So it's no problem to change it to mine or Renata's for this meeting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It will okay. react be better. And then right. you, can, you can change, you know, or instead of having Caroline, it can be um, you the rest of Europe or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good tip. Yeah. And you have another one uh, here. Okay, not this one, sorry. Yes, you can also choose the, the automatic reminder one hour before the webinar, plus one day, plus one week before you go. Okay. So this is on automatically. Okay. Uh, okay. Analyst and uh, registrants. Uh -huh. So good. So if you have one webinar, it's okay to put all of them. But for example, for the ILC, in three days, we had nine webinars. So we disable many of these sec settings, otherwise you will receive <laughs> so many emails. Mm -hmm. It can be annoying. It depends on the context of the webinar. Right. Right. So this one is for after the webinar. If you want to send something like, thank you for attending. Yeah, this is nice, yeah. You can choose one day, two days, three days after. Okay. And the last one is for those who registered, but did not come. We are sorry oh, that you were not available. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. That's why UPF keeps sending. I was wondering how hard did they did they really check to see whether I attended or not? This okay. Is good. <laughs> Who does it? Otherwise, <laughs> and also for the IC, we disable all this because otherwise you will receive so many emails, you know. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, the registrant. So my question was because we had um in our webinar, we want to get the registration information for our contacts. So we've sent out the link with registration to Google Docs and we will send out the link three days before the meeting. But to get into the meeting, they should be able to come in directly with the link because it's a, a UN meeting and the UN wants to distribute the link so that their people can just join like that. So that means those people will not be covered in this email system, right? They will not get any automatic mails because the registration is, this registration link is, how does this part work? The registration for the webinar? And when you create a Zoom or a webinar, Zoom also makes a registration link like this. Oh. You can make a logo, you can put more description, etc. here. And you can also add more elements, for example, the country, the job, many things. So that I should find that in the meeting setting, the registration? Yeah, on the website, just here. For example, uh, registration settings, I want to edit that point. I go to questions and then I just add as many things as I want. You know, for example, if I save all this and I come back here, I update that page. Or maybe I did not put the, um, sorry, I should have put on the left. First, what I want, and on the right is what is required. But if mm -hmm. I put all this, for example, I save, and then I come back here and I just update that page, you will have much more things. Yeah. And in red with this uh, icon, it's just what is required. Mm -hmm. So if you want many details, you can ask all these questions. But remind you, I just remind you that if you have too many things, it can annoy some people. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the registers that mean only people who are registered can enter this meeting? It depends. On, right. on my setting again. It depends. Um, in that case here, let me check. We ask for registration, but you can also disable this. And still have a registration form. Then you will not have registration at all. Oh. Uh, so just to show you, if you click on that and you save, usually when you make big changes, before you save, Zoom wants you, I mean, gives you the opportunity to let the people who, who registered know about these big changes. So if you don't want them to know, you just unclick that section here. You do this, 
And then you will see that actually the link is much shorter. It's, an, it's a simple, actually very short link. If you have a re registration system, then the link becomes very longer because of all the questions here. And actually, if I update that page, yeah, it's still it's still working, but it doesn't mean it's not, I mean, it's not required anymore. You just have to give that to the people and they will go in the webinar directly. So is the link, the longer link, because the registration is particular to that person and their name? Yeah. And they register as their name, okay. So it's either they register and it's only registration and then we have all the records or no registration required and we can't use this, this technique. What is your question, sorry? If we can use this registration Zoom um, template without yes. compulsory registration to attend the webinar, if people yeah. could then just join by the link that we sent out. Both, in other words, they will have to register first. If you want, uh, if you click on this button. Uh huh. Okay. So <laughs> then we can't use it this time because we want, we need to give the link to the UN staff for them to be able to join uh, on mass without. Yes, and also this time already people have registered with yeah, an yeah. link. But it's good to know for the future because we can make a different decision each time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. so also another point, if you go on the third section here with branding, you can actually up, up, upload a logo. So this will appear on the, on the registration page. Let me try, for example, with, I don't have a logo here, sorry. Let me try just something random. Okay, I will do ILC and webinars and all invitation. I will just put the main logo. For example, this one, I hope it, the size is enough. I don't know, maybe it didn't work. Let me try again. If you put a logo, usually in Zoom, the, you should not put a big logo. Mm -hmm. This is the size here, 600 mm -hmm. by 600. I don't know. I don't know why it's not working. And normally, if you put uh, your logo, you should see it, and it will appear at the top here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know why it's not working, but anyway. Okay. Yeah. And after, like in Zoom, you can also have some polls or survey, but I think it's not really necessary. It's a little bit optional. So anyway. Most important is to have to invite people here with this link and make sure that um, yeah, basically you have the right link. So it's a long link right here. Mm -hmm. Usually you can copy that, go on a website like a tiny. I use this website usually you know, to make a long link into a small one. So for example, then you can make a Universal Women Federation World Peace. If the event is on 20 May or something like this, just write it like this and the, the new link will be short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more beautiful, I mean, it's more beautiful, it's more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is maybe the last tips I can share with you. And of course, if you want to see how many people registered completely at the bottom, you will see here, manage attendees. 13 people registered for this webinar. If you click on edit, you can see who are those people mm -hmm. one by one. And for a more complete report, like any webinars, you just go on, if it's a simple one, you, you will have a report section here. If it's a more complicated Zoom account like this one, usually you go on account management and after reports. Mm -hmm. Then you choose webinar, example, registration report, you choose the time. And then for example, this one, I want to regenerate 
a report with all of the registrants, etc. And then you have the Excel file okay, with more details. <clears throat> Especially at the end of the webinar, it's important to have who registered, who attended, who did not come, etc. From which country, etc. etc. So yeah. Wunderbar. <laughs> And then after regarding a normal webinar, I usually use this kind of cue sheets. I created myself. You created yourself, okay. Cause you mentioned that in the last meeting and I wanted a copy of that. <laughs> I can send it to you. Please. <laughs> For example, if we start at 10, the host usually opens the, what we call the practice session one hour before. The staff can come, we talk, we relax ourselves, we make jokes. We also test the PowerPoint, make sure everything is fine. Maybe 30 minutes before the event, the, the speakers, mm -hmm. um, we test the, the PowerPoints, we welcome them, we make sure they're they are here because if someone is missing, then you have to call that person and you may have to, you may have to, I mean, you will worry if that person did not, did not have the link. So here's a, is the a last tips for you, maybe. If you come back here, <clears throat> remember this section about the panelist. I want to make an example with myself, which is extremely practical and really powerful. If you go like this, it, say, it sends an email to my link, to my email directly. But imagine that I, I don't know, I am lost, I am, uh, I don't find it, okay? Then I, I'm asking Lily to help me, please send me the link, my personal link. <laughs> if you need that, you can still come back here, edit. And even if this copy section sounds not appropriate, if you actually click on that, you can have the content of the email itself. Mm. And especially this link is what the, the speaker needs. So this link, this very long link, is what I need. It's the link for me. So for example, if you have uh, someone, for example, I forgot my email, then you can just copy that. And after you go on uh, WhatsApp, and then you send it to that person directly. So this is his email. It's very practical because you can help the, that person by bringing his personal link to him directly. And only the, the, the person who access the website can do that. Mm -hmm. Usually only the host. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So doing that, you know, that one hour before, if you, are, if you have one panelist that really struggle to find his email, you can help him with that mm -hmm. at the last, it's the last chance. You, know. you can also just, you know, before doing that, you can also just resend. If you just if you resend, the, mm -hmm. same, the same email will come back. You know? For example, let me see. I should receive an email soon. For example, you see, mm -hmm. this is exactly the same content. Okay. And I received another one zero minutes ago because I clicked on that button, resend. Mm -hmm. So this is an extra help for the, for the host. So you can check all this during this 30 last minutes. And usually what I do is five minutes, 50, I mean, five minutes before the webinar, I, when everything is ready, when I have my countdown video ready, do you know what is a countdown video, right? Um, Andy uses them. Tony, I've never done anything like that. I see. Let me show you an example. Uh, and Tony, you're muted if you want to say something. Oh, cool. uh, okay. Let me. For example, this is the meeting, the countdown I created for IAFLP. Hang on, I think Tony was trying to call me. You're muted. We don't hear you, Tony. Are you trying to talk uh, to me on the phone? Yeah, sorry. I, I accidentally pressed the button. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, can you see that uh, video? Right, okay. 
So it's a five minutes video with a nice music. And I, I share my screen with that video. And then I click on open the webinar, you know, the blue button. So when the attendees come, they see that. Mm -hmm. they, they recognize the logo, they recognize the title of the webinar, the time, and it, it makes them feel confident because, oh, okay, I'm not, I'm in the right place. This is where I registered for. I recognize these pictures, that's good. <laughs> and at the end, when, at the very last second, I just stop sharing my screen and I spotlight the, the MC. So even for the MC, it's convenient because the MC knows when uh, he has to start or she has to start. You see, everybody knows, everybody's on the same page and we know that it starts in 30 seconds. So it's most, you know. So if it's difficult to make such a video, I can eventually help. But this is a one detail like this. And also, it's also during this five minutes that as a host, I do the live streaming on Facebook. So it's the most stressful time for the host. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it should be ready before 10. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I recommend you also that you even tra train yourself, practicing this one by one step to make sure that it's working. And after everything you have here just depends on the organizer's script or what they want to do one by one. This is quite incomplete, of course, because it's not updated, but let me show you one of, for example, this one. This is what we did for the, I'll see. Then in blue, I see that I, I, I'm sure that you know the webinar starts. And then just one by one, the MC introduces who that person speaks or use a video. Do I have the video? Usually I put in red if I don't have the video yet. If I have, if I tested it and it's working, I put that in blue. So then you know I know it's good. If there is something red, it means something is missing or has to be checked. Otherwise, it's difficult because it's complicated to remind, remember everything. And then if everybody agrees on the right order, then everything is clear, no? You can also estimate the time that you want to give to each speaker. Five minutes or 10, or 10, etc. cetera. Maybe um, can send this example also to us because then we have uh, read an example. Absolutely. Yeah. I will send it to you. So I suggest next step will be that we each go through and we get one cue sheet that we agree on. So Renata, that you make what you think it should be and then Tony and I go through and it needs to be very clear who's doing what and then the next meeting we run through following yeah. the cue sheet Absolutely. to make another trial with the cue sheet. That's true. That's why sometimes we, we spend one hour as a team just looking at that cue sheet and discussing things. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only technical, it's like mm -hmm. that person is important. So should that person speak first or last? You mm -hmm. know, this kind of uh, important questions. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Thanks, Victor. This is really precious. That was really what I wanted from you. <laughs> After depending on who is translating, who is translating, do you have one or two person? Do you need Arabic? No, you don't need, so you just delete like this. And another last point is having a co-host, but I think Anthony is the co-host. So the co-host, you know, if something happens to the host, your computer suddenly breaks or you don't have internet anymore, then the co-host knows all the cue sheet has all the videos ready and if something happened to you then Anthony can just continue because he knows what he has to do that's that's why it's quite useful to have a co-host and uh if you need some bios you know for example the Caroline was introducing Julia Moon so Alan was putting the bios prepared in advance at that time in the chat so people can also read the long bios of Julia, you know. So 
having someone dedicated for that, having at least one person per language. And if you have questions, it's good to have uh, someone also specifically dedicated at looking at the Q&A section, answering and also transmitting these questions to the MC or to, that, to the person that will ask questions. I don't know what is this, the scenario of your webinar, but usually you know, the speakers speak one by one. And after, after that, we have the Q&A section. So it's not only prepared questions. You can also have questions really sent by attendees and it makes the webinar more excited. So the MC cannot just do that because the MC should really focus on her script. And it's, it's better if you have someone else, for example, here, Marilyn, focusing on the English questions, someone else focusing on these questions, et cetera, et cetera. If you need a reporter, at that time, Renate was the reporter. Thank you, Renate. At the end, you can ask the speakers to say your last words, waving to have a good picture, and the end. This cue sheet is quite good because if you change something here, for example, I put 25, you know, it's, everything is changing here. So you can see when it will, up, up, it will finish. Just oh, you got the formula in there already. Okay, that's great. Uh -huh. Automatic, it's a simple addition. Okay, yeah. Oh, uh, it's quite useful, yeah. You can set it to you. And uh, the first time I did the webinar, I trained myself a lot. I, I had uh, several computers and I was really, you know, I can even show you my own settings. Yeah, yeah, that would be helpful because when I went through all the settings, I thought, oh, now should we let them chat or shouldn't we? Should they chat to the host or not at all? Should we have the camera on? I wasn't sure when we say no camera for the host, did that mean I will never be able to turn the camera on at all or? Or what these settings mean from the beginning? Well, no, you can always reverse. You can always okay. turn on your camera on. So I have one desk here, another desk here. This is my main computer. Ah, this another point I wanted to tell you. If you're uh, screen sharing a video or a PowerPoint, it's actually quite important to have a quite good computer because it actually require quite a lot of CPU, you know, the resources of the computer. If you are just using a computer like this, it might be, uh, you know, I had some trouble sometimes, you know, putting for a Sunday service, Spice TV, but because my computer was just full, you know, the CPU was 100%. So the quality of the video was so bad that you could not, you could not even read the subtitles. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. because of the computer CPU. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I always use it as a main mm -hmm. computer to make sure that it works, especially because you are also streaming on Facebook. So you need more resources. Mm -hmm. I have one screen to see what I am doing and also another screen for screen sharing. So mm -hmm. I don't. Oh, okay. It's okay. always a range. Okay. This computer, personally, I use it to be a co-host because it helps, for example, if I want to write messages or if this computer is suddenly slow, I am already myself a co-host. And I also use my wife's computer here to be the attendee view. So, and also each computer has the Ethernet line with the fiber here and also no Wi Fi. <laughs> fiber, you know, that gives you a good internet connection. Okay. So this really helps a lot to guarantee a good, uh, a good uh, settings. Right. Yeah. If you can, of course, if you. Yeah. Yeah, now I just got my new computer set up and, and Timmy connected me with a with a cable because our Wi-Fi sometimes gets quite unstable and mm -hmm. I've only had it a couple of weeks and once I still know, I know, maybe, I think it was the other person, I still noticed a few times that it said internet connection is unstable, but I think it was the other person, not mine, so uh, hopefully everything will work there, yeah. Yeah. All right. 
And because I get a little bit stressed during the webinars, I always have a van with me to refresh myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great, Victor. You've been a wonderful support. I'm really happy we could record that and I'll I think I'll um, share that with us again that we can have another look at it. And mm -hmm. if you can send us the cue sheets, then we would be very grateful for that. And I think Renata, you'll have to be the first one to go through to say the order of things. Maybe you don't have to put in all the details, but at least the, the program is in there clearly. And then Tony and I can go through and see what else we need to add for the uh, technical stuff. Mm -hmm. Xiong Yu, if you, if you say. Just a very last point to make sure. You know, for example, that webinar starts on June 4, but actually I can start the practice session. I can leave it. I can start again. I can leave it as much as I want in real conditions. There will be no attendees, just me, but it's good because you can try, you can check if your panelists have the right link, for example, you see? So one question I had there, Victor, was because I'm using Caroline's account, yes. when I log into, because she said she was in a meeting just now, yeah. and Tony was saying he has gone into the account when Lizzie was in, and he kicked her out. Would yes. that happen if, I, if Caroline's in a meeting, and I go in to check, for example, to do a practice session? Would that mean I would kick her out of the meeting she's in? Yes, that's why you have to, I mean, that the Zoom account can be in one webinar only. So if she's somewhere and you, look, and you start another webinar or another meeting, then Caroline will be out, you know. Okay, good. Then we have to tee up the, the next practice session with, with Caroline that it doesn't interfere with her meeting. Good, yeah. so wonderful. For example, the, the Zoom account I'm using is this account, Jack Mario. So, because this is what this is for UPF Europe. Mm -hmm. So every time I want him to actually join us, I should I always register him as another uh, to another email, like jackmarionupf.org or something like this. Oh. So if you because want, you have the access under his account, so he has to come in on a different one. Yeah. Okay. So if you're the host using Caroline's account and you want Caroline to join, you should register her with another email. Okay, good tip. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Tony, any questions? Tony, yeah, Tony. Are there any questions? You're muted. Okay. No, no. Um, with the, I mean, I, I did make a countdown for another meeting that we can use for this meeting. Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, I just need the screen. So I have the clock and the slide, but I would need the screen that you want with the pictures of the speakers. So Renata, to prepare what? The, the... It's a, just the slide. I just need yeah. a slide. And then I will put the clock onto the slide. Mm -hmm. If you need any help with that, Renato, let me know. I think it's basically if you can get photos of each of the participants. Oh, you're muted, Renato. We can't hear you. Is it to have something like that, like one, maybe one picture and then the photos of the participants and yeah. those yeah. Yeah. And, and the logo and the title of the meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just have another question actually regarding the cross posting. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, do you know how it works? You know I saw you talked about that at the last meeting that I joined for WFWP. Um, and I remember when the first time when we did it for the Rally of Hope, where they were asking for the members to to log in, but I have I didn't see it actually on the on the settings in the webinar. Um, okay, let me explain you again. So when you register, when you stream on Facebook, well, let me make it more higher quality. So you, you need to choose actually one central page. And from that page, you will cross post to the other Facebook pages, okay? Mm -hmm. 
So I will show the example of UPF AUME because I am an admin of that page. Okay. When you are the admin, you have the left section here. You go completely at the bottom, you go to settings. Then you have more complicated many settings, but among them, you have the cross posting section. Mm. So here you can see that I already added all these pages, UPF Scotland, Ireland, South London, et cetera, et cetera. It means if I actually stream on Facebook with this main page, I can also at the same time cross post to all these other pages. I have the right. It's something to, that has to be done before your webinar. So if I want to add another page, for example, I don't know, this one, then I cannot just do it like this. I need the confirmation from that mm. the admin of that page. So if I do this, I receive a, a, a link here and I have to send that link to the admin of that, of that page. So for example, if, if it's your Renate, I send, it, I send that to you, then you open it and you confirm the, the permission for cross-posting. Mm -hmm. From that time, it has to be done only once. From that time, then whenever I do a webinar, I have the automatic access to cross-post on your Facebook. So here now where you've got Europe, WWP, is that waiting for you or for me to approve? Because I'm admin on Europe. Okay. So I want to click on that. And I just now have to send that to you, Lily. Let's make an example right now. Okay. I send it to you. So tell me what you, if it works. I think you just have to click on that and this should happen, this should work. Hang on, I don't know. Facebook. So I'm, I'm in incognito. I went into incognito window for Caroline's account, so I'm going to go back to mine. Okay, so... Um, so the, the invitation comes to my Facebook account or to my email? I send that to, to your WhatsApp. Okay. Right. Talk, you know, on Connect Facebook. Okay. Oh, you. I don't speak French. <laughs> the message came in French. <laughs> Sorry, this content isn't available at the moment. Okay. Go back to the previous page. Interesting. WWP. The link you followed may have expired or the page may only be visible to the audience if you aren't in. Go back to the previous page. I don't know what happened there. Okay. So maybe I should share my screen and show you what I'm... Probably, yeah. Yes. Let me share screen. That's this one here. And, okay, this was where I get confused now. When I, As soon as I share my screen, I've lost my my zooming capacity oops but you see my screen right yes. oh, i don't want to oh, no. <laughs> okay um all right so this is my um facebook account and i go to the um wfwp i don't want just mine i want um okay then i go to europe and on the left settings so these are all the other admins um uh -huh. maybe it's because you are an editor Maybe only oh, the... so I haven't. Okay, so maybe Doris or Evelyn or Natasha have to do that. Oh, okay, then I'll. All right. <laughs> it's funny, you know, I set up this page originally and <laughs> then I gave it up. And then, anyhow. <laughs> okay, good. Doesn't matter. So, one of those, I have to ask 
Dorothy, she can... Yeah. So it's about the cross-posting in this section here, right? Yeah. To accept that. Just send them the link and nobody should work directly. The one that you just sent to me on WhatsApp? Okay. All right. Good. Okay, then I'll... Now, I want to get that... Okay, stop share. Right. All right. I will send to you the, the cue sheet. And Please. Uh, cross posting. I mean, actually, they will be the one that need to cross post to all the other pages you want to do. Yeah. So the best is that they probably should just make you the admin. That's what I was going to say because yeah, the yeah. thing is I come and go. You know, I was there and then I was gone and then now I'm back again. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's okay. Now it's for an important, an important purpose. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, Renata, maybe this is something for you to take note of. I mean, Caroline isn't there anywhere because these, they weren't interested. When I set the first Facebook page up for Women's Federation, Caroline and all of the leaders, nobody was interested in any of this. Mm. And then after a while, somebody, I think Doris was the first one to jump onto the bandwagon and really did a lot. Anyhow, um, so just to talk to Caroline to make it, um, clear with her, and I don't know how many admins you can have on a Facebook page, but if she um, Limited. gives me the admin rights, then I can do the cross-posting, otherwise we have to rely on on somebody else to do it, and no, 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 if we I are you in Vienna, it would be better if I can just go, jump in and do it. Yes, I think it will be good, yeah. But we can ask Doris about it, if there is any, I don't know, are there limitations? Because there's three admins now, but I think it's, I don't know who is doing what. I've if never seen anything from Evelyn. I've, I've seen mainly stuff from, the, from Tanya, mm. Doris a bit. The others I haven't seen at all, yeah. Ask Doris if it's a problem to make you admin. Yeah, is... okay. Mm -hmm. Good. I think that we've done great. We've, been here an hour. I've got a video. We can go over the video. Victor will send us the cue sheets. Yeah, yeah. We are scheduling another meeting on the, Renata, you said on the 11th on Tuesday night oh, at 7 o'clock. I think this is a different thing because there we invite the speakers. Maybe this, it, not to make, to make those, to discuss those things that they, they also need to know because they don't need to know the background. I don't know if we need another meeting just with the techniques because um, with the speakers, then we have to just go through the cue sheet uh, that they understand how long they can speak and these kind of things, yeah. I mean, so how, do you share the cue sheet with the speakers as well or just with the, with the technical stuff? I think we shouldn't just, we just have to explain to them their speaking time. So this is a little bit different, yeah, than from we, what we did today. But we will need one with Kyungin because she's the MC and I think she she should understand much of what's going on, yeah, because she's the MC and she has to guide through this, yeah. Then with, we can also share the video with her. You know. We can share the video with her and then um, you can arrange with her when you want to have another meeting and when Caroline will let us take the time because we've taken one hour off her account time now, which um, I need to let her know as soon as we finish that she can go into any other meetings that she needs. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll, I'll distribute the video. You can share it with her, the cue sheet we can look at and when you can let us know that when we can do the next trial technical meeting on the saturday because on the friday to in the, because in the daytime she doesn't have time so friday we have an eve in the evening we have with this um mal competition already a meeting but then maybe on saturday which some, saturday the coming saturday on the eighth yeah yeah because there are more questions coming and then to set up everything with this with this post cross posting and all these kind of things so it's better be so on the 11th, is that a, a meeting about this meeting or is that something else? Is that going to be a webinar on this link or something else? On with this link, we should okay. have okay. link and it's meeting the speakers. Those okay. the, uh, the not the uh, not the ambassador the embassies, but Caroline and 
um, Mr. Narada and um, from Kenya and from Philippines, Merle and Susan, to meet them and to brief them on how it's going to run. So go through the cue sheet, but we don't have it to have have it on the page. Just okay. that we understand uh, how it works, yeah. Okay. And the speaking times, and they, they see each other, and they see us, so that we are a team. Okay. So Victor, I think that's that's really great. Um, not sure for look forward to the cue sheet, and I think we'll man we'll do it by ourselves. And if we don't manage, we'll get back and ask questions. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's a good trial. Yes. Yeah. Does Tony have any more questions? No, just if you can meet on Saturday. I also have a meeting on Saturday for rehearse the Sunday service. Okay. Uh, in the evening. So um, if it's during the day, then it's okay for me. Okay. So early afternoon or something like this would be okay? Yeah. Early afternoon would be okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, we have to check with Caroline and with Kyungin. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Wunderbar. Danke vielmals. Danke schön. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much. Tony, Welcome. Maya. Bye. There's somebody else in the attendees. Is it's Maya. Imgard. Oh. Thank you, Imgard, for coming. And next time, no, next time we won't give you a face because you're not a panelist. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to close the meeting now. All right. I'm going to stop recording first and then close the meeting. I stop recording. <laughs>